All right. First of all, I want to thank Gail and Charlie who are on the scene doing work every time uh, we have a disaster here in the United States of America, but obviously the Red Cross uh, is doing outstanding work internationally, so we want to thank them for their outstanding work. Uh, a few things that I want to emphasize to the public uh, at the top. Uh, this storm is not yet over. Uh, we've gotten briefings from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, it is still moving north. There are still communities that could be affected. Uh, and so I want to emphasize there's still risks of flooding. There are still risks of downed power lines, risks of high winds. And so it is very important for the public to continue to monitor the situation in your local community, listen to your state and local officials, follow instructions. Uh, the more you follow instructions, the easier it is uh, for our first responders uh, to make sure that they are dealing with true emergency situations. Uh, so the better prepared individual families are for the situation, uh, the easier it is going to be for us to deal with it. Um, next, obviously, I want to talk about uh, the extraordinary hardship that we've seen uh, over the last 48 hours. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to all the families who've lost loved ones. Uh, unfortunately, there have been fatalities as a consequence of Hurricane Sandy, uh, and it's not clear that uh, we've uh, counted up all the fatalities at this point. Uh, and obviously, this is something that uh, is heartbreaking for the entire nation. And we certainly uh, feel profoundly for all the families whose lives have been upended uh, and are going to be going through some very tough times uh, over the next uh, several days and perhaps several weeks and months. Uh, the most important message I have for them is that America is with you. Uh, we are standing behind you, uh, and we are going to do everything we can uh, to help you get back on your feet. Uh, earlier today, I had a conversation with uh, the governors and many of the mayors in the affected areas, uh, including uh, Governor Christie, uh, Governor Cuomo, and Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, I want to praise them for the extraordinary work that they have done. Uh, you know, uh, sadly, we are getting more experience uh, with these kinds of uh, big impact storms uh, along the East Coast, and uh, the preparation shows. Uh, were it not for the outstanding work that they and their teams uh, ha uh, have already done uh, and will continue to do in the affected regions, uh, we could have seen more deaths uh, and more property damage. So they have done extraordinary work uh, working around the clock. The coordination between the state, local, uh, and federal governments uh, has been outstanding. Uh, Obviously, we're now moving into the recovery phase uh, in a lot of the most uh, severely affected areas. Uh, New Jersey, New York in particular, have been pounded by this storm. Connecticut uh, has taken a big hit. Uh, because of some of the work that had been done ahead of time, uh, we've been able to get over 1,000 FEMA uh, officials in place, pre-positioned. We've been able to get supplies, food, medicine, uh, water, uh, emergency generators to ensure that hospitals uh, and uh, law enforcement offices are able to stay up and running uh, as they are out there responding. Uh, we are going to continue to push as hard as we can uh, to make sure that power is up throughout the region. And obviously, this is mostly a local responsibility, and uh, the private utilities are going to have to lean forward. But we are doing everything we can to provide them additional resources uh, so that we can expedite getting power up and running uh, in many of these communities. There are places like Newark, New Jersey, for example, where you've got 80, 90 percent of the people without power. We can't have a situation where that lasts for days on end. Uh, and so my instructions to the federal agency has been do not uh, figure out why we can't do something. I want you to figure out how we do something. Uh, I want you to cut through red tape. I want you to cut through bureaucracy. Uh, there's no excuse for inaction at this point. I want every agency to lean forward and to make sure that we are getting the resources where they need, uh, where they're needed as quickly as possible. Uh, so I, I want to repeat my message to the federal government. No bureaucracy, no red tape. Get resources where they're needed as fast as possible, as hard as possible, and for the duration. Uh, because the recovery process, obviously, in a place like New Jersey 
uh, is going to take a significant amount of time. Uh, the recovery process in a lower Manhattan is going to take a lot of time. And part of what we're trying to do here is also to see uh, where are some uh, resources that can be brought to bear that maybe traditionally are not used uh, in these kind of disaster uh, situations. For example, there may be military assets that allow us to help move uh, equipment uh, to ensure that pumping and getting the flooding uh, out of uh, New York subway systems can, uh, can proceed more quickly. There may be uh, resources that we can bring to bear to help uh, some of the private utilities get their personnel and their equipment in place more swiftly so that we can get power up and running uh, as soon as possible. So uh, my message to the governors and the mayors uh, and through them to the communities uh, that have been hit so hard is that we are going to do everything we can to get resources to you and make sure that uh, any unmet need that I is identified, we are responding to it as quickly as possible. And I told the mayors and the governors, uh, if they're getting no uh, for an answer somewhere in the federal government, uh, they can call me personally uh, at the White House. Now, obviously, you know, the, the state, local, federal response is important, but what we do as a community, what we do uh, as neighbors and as fellow citizens is equally important. So a couple of things that I want the public to know they can do. First of all, uh, because, you know, our local law enforcement, our first responders are being swamped, to the extent that everybody can be out there looking out for their neighbors, uh, especially older folks, I think that's really important. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a neighbor nearby, you're not sure how they're uh, handling a power outage, uh, flooding, et cetera, uh, go over, visit them, knock on their door, make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, that can make a big difference. Uh, the public can be the eyes and ears in terms of identifying uh, unmet needs. Second thing. The reason we're here is because uh, the Red Cross knows what it's doing when it comes to uh, emergency response. And so for people all across the country who have not been affected, uh, now's the time to uh, show the kind of generosity that uh, you know, makes uh, America the greatest nation on earth. And a good place to express that generosity is by contributing to the Red Cross. Uh, obviously, you can go on their website. The Red Cross knows what they're doing. They're in close contact with federal, state, and local officials, they will make sure that we get the resources to uh, those families uh, as swiftly as possible. And again, I want to thank everybody here uh, who's doing such a great job uh, when it comes to uh, the disaster response. Uh, the final message I just uh, say is, um, you know, during the, the darkness of the storm, I think we also saw what's brightest in America. I mean, I think all of us obviously have been uh, shocked by uh, the force of Mother Nature uh, as we watch it on television. At the same time, we've also seen uh, nurses at NYU Hospital carrying fragile newborns uh, to safety. Uh, we've seen uh, incredibly brave firefighters in Queens, uh, waist deep in water, uh, battling infernos and uh, rescuing people in boats. Um, one of my favorite stories is down in North Carolina, uh, the Coast Guard going out to save a sinking ship. Uh, they sent a, a rescue swimmer out. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the, the rescue swimmer uh, said, hi, I'm Dan. Uh, I understand uh, you guys need a ride. Uh, you know, that kind of spirit of resilience and strength, uh, but most importantly, looking out for one another, uh, that's why we always bounce back from these kinds of disasters. Uh, you know, this is a tough time for a lot of people, millions of folks all across the eastern seaboard, but America's tougher, uh, and we're tougher because we pull together. We leave nobody behind. Uh, we make sure that uh, we respond uh, as, as a nation uh, and uh, remind ourselves that uh, uh, whenever an American is in need, uh, all of us uh, stand uh, together to make sure that we're providing the help that's necessary. So uh, I just want to thank uh, the incredible uh, response that we've already seen. But I do want to remind people this is going to take, uh, this is going to take some time. Uh, it is not going to be easy for a lot of these communities to recover swiftly. And so it's going to be important that we sustain that spirit of resilience, uh, that we continue to be good neighbors uh, for the duration until everybody's back on their feet. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Red Cross.